Hi there, today we want to look at how to rotate boxes in perspective and in doing so enabling us to draw from imagination. Wouldn't it be cool to do this in your drawings? Roaming around freely in whatever scene you've imagined. But oftentimes when we're sitting down to draw, we just can't bring those ideas onto paper. And rotating boxes in perspective, perspective in general, brings us a long way to do so. In this first part, we are starting to rotate boxes the slow way. Not so much to end up on it or use it in the same speed in the future, but see it as training wheels, which will enable us to draw boxes more intuitively in the future. It's a helpful tool to learn. So let's get this thing started. This video does not explain basic perspective. So how vanishing points work, two point and one point perspective. We are going to jump right onto the carousel of rotating boxes. Rotating a box in perspective is challenging. It's not intuitive and it does not come natural to us. So let's simplify. Let's change the perspective to a top view. So now we are looking at it from the top and our box appears as a 2D shape, as a square basically. And if we start to rotate that square, we see that the outside points of our square are following a circle path. The more we rotate it, the more the circle gets filled up. And additionally to that, there's also an inner circle. So if we are following the center point of our edges, we will see that this center point of the edge, of the edges, are also following a circle path, like so. So no matter how far we rotate the square, we can be sure that these edge points are always on the outer circle and the center point of our edges, so the connecting line between our points, is also lying on this inner circle. Fun fact, by the way, no matter the object we are rotating, the outlines are always described as a circle. So let's take this weird monkey head and rotate it as well. And you will see that the outermost points of this monkey head are also described as a circle. So if we would be able to project this project this 2D behavior we just saw into 3D space, we would be able to get a great grip on rotating boxes in perspective. So let's see how this applies to a 3D view. Let's zoom out the camera like so, and we can see it still applies even in perspective. Something weird happened to our circle, but we will look at this in, in a moment, but the general concept applies. Let's check if this behavior also works on different axes. So if, for example, if you want to rotate our box uh, sideways and it also applies here. You can basically put your uh, circle at every axis you like. So at this point you basically like, uh, yeah, nice theory and all, but how does this apply to my drawing? So the main insight here is, the main takeaway here is, if we are able to draw perfect circles in perspective, we've got the major enabler to draw boxes in perspective and to describe their rotation path. So the main art form here is how to put those circles into perspective. And this is what we will be looking at next. Okay, now we know that displaying a perfect circle in space or in perspective can bring us a long way. So let's see what happens if we actually bring the circle into perspective. Some interesting things happen here. 
First of all, let's look at this circle from front view. And we're slowly gonna tip it over in, uh, into perspective. What we notice is that it becomes more and more elliptical. You can imagine this um, or reproduce this example with a cup of coffee or a glass on your table. If you look at it from front view and start tipping it over, it becomes more and more elliptical until if we tipped it far enough, it vanishes into a line, straight line. So let's look at this elusive ellipse form and see what it's made of and which rules it follows. Let's take a closer look at this 2D oval shape and we will see that it's divided in half by two axes. Those axes go through the widest points of the ellipse. The major axis describes the longer division and the minor axis describes the smaller one. Also note that these two axes are always perpendicular to each other, like so, and they are dividing this 2D egg shape in four equal parts. If those criteria which we just saw are not met, we are not talking about an ellipsis. It could be an elongated ellipse, it can, could be a weird organic other shape. Yes, like you, Mr. Monkey. But maybe the most mind-blowing thing or interesting thing in this case is that you could think this 2D concept, which we just saw, is somehow weirdly distorted in perspective. But actually, this 2D concept, as long as we're talking about a perfect circle, applies to the 3D space. Let me show you an example. So let's look at those perfect circles from a bird's eye perspective. We're basically looking down on them. And now let's start to rotate the camera, bring it down so we can see that these perfect circles in perspective can be described with this 2D concept of an ellipse. So we've got a major axis, we get a minor axis, they are perpendicular to each other and they divide this shape into four equal parts. This principle will come in handy in the future when we are rotating boxes in perspective. This consistency of a 2D concept in a 3D world even goes further. But for that, we have to explain what the center of rotation or the center axis of rotation is. You can imagine it as a toothpick going through the center of an object. For example, a piece of cheese. Okay, yes, I'm hungry. Anyway, we can find the center of our object. For example, in this case, as our piece of cheese is represented as a box, we can find the perspective center of our top plane here, for example, with the X trick. And we're putting the toothpick through. And basically the toothpick stands for our Y axis in this moment. And you can imagine this as rotating the toothpick and the piece of cheese or the box rotates alongside. You can also imagine this as the tires of a car, which are literally on an axis. And here you can also find the center point of rotation, put through our axis and rotate the axis and the wheels will rotate accordingly. Now, the fun part is that this 2D concept of the minor axis of the ellipse and this perspective concept of the axis of rotation, that these two lines fall exactly onto each other. Let's demonstrate this on our cheese example. Um, let's assume the piece of cheese is a cube, so a perfect box. And let's therefore imagine that since we are dealing with a perfect circle, the ellipse fills up this top plane. And if you're now drawing in the minor axis, and we're looking at the axis of rotation, our y-axis, we see they exactly match. Mind blown. There's one catch only. 
you could think that the perspective center, so the center point of rotation, falls on the center point of our ellipse, of this 2D concept of our ellipse, but it actually does not. So the center point of the ellipse lies on the minor axis and also lies on the center axis of rotation, but actually the two center points do not match. This has a simple practical consequence for us. If you are drawing your ellipse on the axis of rotation, don't force it onto the perspective center point because it will not match. Another really interesting concept regarding circles in perspective is that the further they are away from us, the more they open up. So for example, let's look at this circle from a side view, which is exactly at eye level or on the horizon line. And let's slowly move it further away from us without changing its, its rotation. What we'll see is that the further it gets away, the more it opens up. This way we can, for, for example, dealing with cylinders, clearly determine which end is closer to us and which end is further away. Another example of this would be the car tires that are linked with the axes. And you can see the tire that's further away from us actually has a wider angle. At this point, you're probably like, nice theory and all, but spare me the geometry lesson. I want to spin boxes. And right you are, here we go. So let's apply our knowledge. Let's start out with a guesstimated box. And to make things easier, let's use a one point perspective doing so. Once we found the perspective center point by using the X track on our bottom plane, we are putting the toothpick through it and basically establishing our axes of rotation. So the next thing we know is that the edge points of our plane on the bottom will move on a circle in space. And we also know that the circle in space is best displayed as an ellipse. And additionally, we know that this ellipse, the minor axis of this ellipse, exactly falls on the axis of rotation. So let's get our ellipse in there. We also know that the center point of the ellipse is, does not match the perspective center point of the plane. So it varies in this case, it's a little bit below the perspective center point. And we're getting in the ellipse that covers all those four edge points. And to close off our um, box rotation, we are also drawing the top ellipse. So the ellipse that describes the top plane and covers all the edge points of the top plane. Now, no matter how we rotate our box, we know those edge points are always moving on those two ellipses. Also, the opening of the angle of further away ellipses applies here. As you can see, the Top ellipse is as at a lower angle as the bottom ellipse, since the top ellipse is closer to us, it's closer to the horizon line, and the angle of the bottom ellipse opens up more. Notice also the roughness of the whole sketch. You will see that the ellipses are kind of off, they're not the perfect shape, and they're not mathematically correct but they're completely enough to find out our initial angles and how the box roughly rotates in space. And that's basically all we want to do in this case. What I'm gonna do next is establishing a basic rotation raster. This is another advantage of working with the ellipse or the uh, circle in space. And it gives you great control of the actual degree you want to rotate your box in. So in this case, we are going to look at the 2D version of the circle, segment it evenly and transfer this concept to the perspective view. You will not necessarily need this when you're just guesstimating a box, but in my case, when I want to rotate the box in 360 de 60 degrees, it's helpful to rotate the box evenly. 
Please also be aware that this is probably not the correct way to segment a 2D circle into even parts. This is just a quick and convenient way for me to guesstimate the rotation raster. After this foundational work is done, the rest of the rotation is pretty straightforward. Basically, we are rotating our bottom plane, the edge points of our bottom plane, along our 30 degree raster. And once we found our new point, we are tracking its height and matching it up with the top plane ellipse. This way we can easily finish the rotation and we get the full box rotated. The hard part here really was the setup and getting in those ellipses. Wait a minute, you say this one is too slow? Well, yes and no. No, because we are using this as a training method, as the training wheels I mentioned in the beginning. And yes, in the sense that there is a more intuitive way to apply and exercise this method. So let's kick things off with four guesstimated random boxes in a one point or two point perspective like so. Let's also go about and find out the perspective center point. And let's put through our axis of rotation, also known as our toothpick. Additionally, we're going to put in our ellipses on the bottom and top plane like so. The only difference here is that we are rotating it on eyesight. So we are not rotating around a fixed raster. We are just eyeballing how much the single point would wander on this elliptical form. So at this point, we just have to finish the rotation as we did before, get in those height lines and there we go. This is a great way to exercise and apply this rotation met method in a more intuitive way. Two very helpful and basic exercises to support our mission in rotating boxes are the 250 box challenge of drawbox.com where you will learn to draw those boxes in perspective more intuitively and practicing ellipses in general so that your ellipses won't look as distorted as mine. So here we are, one of the many ways to rotate a box in perspective. At this point, I'm curious if this was helpful information for you. And would you be even more interested in exploring this topic further? So, for example, looking at it in a more, even more intuitive way and rotating these boxes even faster. Also, keep in mind that I'm also still learning all of those things. I'm teaching you as much as I'm teaching me. At the end, you are awesome to watch this video. I thank you very much and have a good one.